సుమనస్పతి రెడ్డి గారు ఈజ్ ఎ ఫార్మర్ రేడియో బ్రాడ్కాస్టర్ నౌ ట్రైంగ్ టు బికమ్ అన్ ఆర్గానిక్ ఫార్మర్ హిజ్ రేడియో జాబ్ బ్రాట్ హిమ్ ఇన్ టచ్ విత్ ద ట్రెడిషనల్ ఫోక్ మ్యూజిక్ అండ్ కల్చర్ ఆఫ్ ద తెలుగు ఎస్పెషల్లీ తెలంగాణ రీజియన్ and he had the opportunity of recording a wide variety of folk songs and narratives and other folklore at the stations he worked they are a valuable audio archive now his last 8 years in all india radio was spent in, at adilaba and that brought him into gaining some knowledge and insights into tribal way of life he was there in our earlier symposiums also on uh, jati puranas and adivasis hindu adivasi traditions there was a symposium in that uh, he presented on the hindu adivasi tradition of uh, gonds in adilabad area and uh, in the jati puranas uh, symposium he presented the jati puranas of the gond tribal community so this uh, adilabad the tribal knowledge he is going to share with us in comparison with the jati tradition thank you very much uh after the series of excellent presentations uh, i think uh, uh, the kind of new stuff that i might bring in has become very limited and uh, after listening to mr shiv kumar uh, many of these uh, things on which he touched in a very structured man you know very theoretically organized manner i would have uh, anyway touched uh, them uh, in a in a rather informal manner in in my Uh, presentation uh, nevertheless uh, uh i have once again realized how difficult it is to fix and nail down anything as an unquestionable certainty in the discussions about uh, jati varna and caste uh i would uh, focus on only on how two kinds of communities you know uh, termed as you know roughly as tribes and castes look at first themselves and then in relationship with other communities of their type uh, that is how one caste views uh, another caste or other castes in its vicinity how one tribe uh, views other tribes or other tribals in its own vicinity and uh, quite often it's also possible that a caste uh, may have a certain outlook or understanding or approach towards the tribal communities in its vicinity and similarly a tribal community as a community might view caste communities in its vicinity in a certain way uh, because of uh, various situational reasons which are also changing yeah so coming to how uh, tribes or castes look at themselves uh, this i think is, is the most important uh, aspect of uh, the societies or the samaj in india uh, if you consider a tribe or uh, by tribe we generally mean a, a community living in a isolation relative isolation in a forest area uh, if that uh, we take that as the definition of tribe uh, a tribe has its own distinct culture a distinct endogamous purity and it is confined to living in a certain area it has its own culture it has its own mythologies and things like that and by virtue of all these things the members of that community of that tribe consider themselves as distinct that they should retain their purity uh, and contain their interactions with other societies to a certain defined minimum only uh caste also as many uh, thinkers and sociologists and theorists have uh, been writing on this for decades probably owns its origin to tribe uh, we can look at castes as we, a number of tribes brought together for an efficient organization in a, a rural economic setup in a village setup or in a town setup uh largely we would say a uh, caste system works in a very structured manner very well uh in a rural setting because it brings together people engaged in different kinds of vocations organizing themselves into uh separate units and uh, so that a rural 
life uh, based on agriculture can be run efficiently and in a in a way that is much more productive and 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 its wealth is much bigger and larger than a tribal community so we have if we have a potter community uh, we will have some potters in one village some potters in another village and uh, they will be living in this village side by side with a weaver community, with a blacksmith community, with a farming community, with a, uh, their own distinct priestly class or a common priestly class in a village. Uh, but their interactions with other communities in this village are basically uh, mainly for uh, economic reasons. Uh, but as a community, they'll be more closely related to other potters in other villages. So this tribal kind of identity is split into various locations uh, in a rural agricultural village situation. Um, that uh, being, uh, so uh, it is as if uh, into the caste system, we have brought a tribal way of looking at uh, life or organizing oneself but have created a more efficient system. Of course, I agree with all the other aspects about which uh, Mr. Shiv Kumar has uh, spoken, um, that uh, within the caste system, there is a very fine design of how social uh, needs are satisfied, social uh, relations are created in an effective and productive manner. And there's also a great possibility created for social interaction, social satisfaction, community satisfaction, as well as individual satisfaction. Uh, moving on, uh, if we look at how one caste looks at other castes, uh, to get the best idea of, on this, uh, one may have to go to the various Jati Puranas, uh, which still exist in South India uh, in, a, in a much impressive fashion than anywhere in North India and especially in Telangana. Uh, we have bards for each community uh, who narrate, who remember the various li uh, uh, lineages and uh, um, uh, uh, kinship uh, histories of various uh, caste communities and they keep visiting their particular caste at uh, periodical times to narrate this mythological story, which underpins the existence of a caste. For instance, uh, uh, for the washer, washing community um, or the Sakali community, uh, we have a Purana called Madail Purana, uh, which recites how this set of people got this profession. In each of these uh, caste or jati pranas, uh, a fantastic narrative uh, is created to reinforce the importance of the profession into which they have they exist and the critical importance of their profession to the society all around them. Uh, there is uh, this caste. Uh, classified as scheduled caste now, uh, the Madiga caste, which who are uh, now, of course, uh, turn, uh, largely called as untouchables, but uh, because of uh, their profession, which is based on uh, leather and the number of leather artifacts they make for different communities, they held a very critical place in uh, uh, rural economy till uh, their profession was overtaken by uh, the kind of industrial interventions which the British colonialism brought in. The Madigas have, uh, in Telangana, have a very fantastic uh, Jati Purana called uh, Jamba Purana, in which the progenitor of uh, this Madiga caste by name uh, Jambavanta, not the Jambavanta of uh, Ramayana or Mahabharata, uh, uh, this Jambavanta is dressed in a fantastic uh, dress uh, with a very ornate head crown. And he comes onto stage uh, in a community situation and uh, then starts uh, narrating the story of how 
uh, the leather profession is critical for every community and every community is dependent on the madigas for their critical needs, professional need, which is based on a certain leather thing or artifact which they make for them. And when he starts narrating this uh, very proudly, uh, somebody, uh, various actors who act as if they belong to different cars, uh, come and start expressing their displeasure. Uh, that no, 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 we, we did not get anything from the Madiga caste. So when a Brahmin comes and says that, no, I did not get anything from the Madiga caste, the Jam Jambavanta uh, gets into a florid, uh, you know, poetic expression and uh, 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 he points it out to the Brahmin, the person acting as a Brahmin there, that the leather piece from uh, in his uh, thread, is a gift of the Madiga. Without him, he would not have had. Uh, or if a farmer comes and says that, no, 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 he hasn't got uh, anything from the Madiga, then Jamba Vanta points out that the uh, ropes, which used to be earlier leather ropes, uh, used to drive the bullock carts, or uh, a huge tube-like thing, uh, which used to be connected to the buckets, which used to pull irrigation water from wells, uh, and many such things which a farmer uses come and exist only because of the Madiga people making and supplying them. So this way, uh, the existence of the caste and its profession as critical need, uh, as serving the critical need of a society, and thereby uh, that without it, society would collapse in, in a certain way, or you know, would become dysfunctional in a certain aspect is emphasized by these caste Puranas in a big way. So this is how a caste gets its self-identity, its pride, and its uh, you know, great sense of Purushartha, as, as, as Mr. Shivakumar was pointing out, uh, the professional ethic and the professional competence and the uh, pride of creating good stuff, giving quality stuff to the community around. Now compare this with how one tribe may view another tribe. By tribe, as I said earlier, is, is a community living in a relative isolation, not in uh, the common rural setup uh, which exists in the country. And they probably live in some forest area, isolated from the normal village kind of life or a caste-based village society. Uh, Like the castes, each tribe also generally has its own mythological narrative, a mythological explanation of how it came into existence, uh, how it is unique, and how they must preserve their way of life. Uh, we have such uh, mythological narratives for the Gons, for the Kulams, uh, and also the new communities which have been uh, uh, defined as tribes like the Lombardas or Banjaras. In uh, essence, uh, each of these mythological narratives uh, are quite similar to the kind of mythological narratives which different castes have. The only thing is that uh, they do not uh, speak much of the, or hardly any of the professional, particular professional activity of that community because a tribe does not necessarily have a special or defined professional activity which should serve other members of other communities uh, living together in the same vicinity or in the same complex like a village. But the kind of uh, themes that are uh, narrated in these uh, mythologies of uh, various Jati Puranas of so-called tribes, um, they also have a very a significant amount of uh, spiritual dimension to them. They also have a significant amount of uh, practical um, livelihood dimensions explained to them. So uh, for instance, uh, the Lombardas or the Banjaras, uh, uh, till uh, not uh, a few decades ago, were largely pastoral people. 
uh, engaged in uh, rearing cows and bullocks uh, uh, and uh, also traveling uh, around in the country looking for good pastures and also doing transportation and some small businesses like selling salt, etc. on the sides. Uh, so uh, the, the Jati Puranas of uh, these communities um, explain and uh, prescribe how they must perform uh, uh, these uh, activities like you know rearing cows etc in such a way that uh, they do not get into friction with other communities uh, with whom they may have to they may have to deal with when they're traveling looking for pastures etc uh, in the case of gones for instance uh, uh, there isn't any such professional particular professional activity uh, like rearing cows but they too have uh, a bit of a crude agricultural practice um, so uh, the Puranas explain how they came to have this kind of agriculture, the kind of festivals they have, the kind of musical instruments they have, the kind of uh, rituals they have, the kind of uh, uh, various kinship relations they should maintain between different gotras, etc. So the, the social structure, uh, the kind of relationships that should exist between different strands of uh, the tribal community, and uh, uh, the entire life cycle and the ritual patterns they must follow by which uh, they should reinforce their special identity is uh, uh, very well defined and you know, uh, kept as a memory to, to be remembered, uh, to be transferred through narration, uh, generation after generation. Uh, given this kind of parallels, it's easy to see that uh, the tribal communities of this country and the caste communities of this country have uh, a very, very similar, uh, you know, uh, approach towards their own uh, identity, their own existence, and their own importance. Now, uh, moving on to how one caste may look at another caste, we have already discussed it. And now how one tribe may view another tribe. Uh, in Adilabad area, for instance, we have uh, the Gon tribes, the Gon tribe, the Kolam tribe, we have the Nayak codes, and uh, we have the newly uh, brought in communities uh, like uh, Lombardas and Banjaras who moved into this area only a uh, hundred or two hundred years ago, but have been given a tribal identity. Uh, amongst the traditional tribal communities, the Gons, uh, the Kolams, and the Noyak poets, we can see there exists a certain kind of tribal cohesion. Although there's no question of uh, them marrying between each other, endogamy is strictly followed, but uh, they may have their settlements close by. You know, one settlement may have a, a a small uh, habitation of the Gons, a little away in the under the same uh, settlement, there could be a habitation of the Kolams and there could be also a habitation of the uh, Nayaka ports. So they may live very close to each other in small settlements. And uh, on certain occasions, they come into interaction with each other, like certain fe common festivals, which are observed by all of them in a similar way, or because of uh, certain overarching uh, mythological stories, which all of them like. Some, for some communities, it's a, uh, the, this mythological narrative may be a defining uh, narrative, but for other communities, it's one of their favorite mythological uh, story, which they love to hear, and they will wish to identify with the characters of this mythological narrative. Uh, here I'm talking about Mahabharata, for instance. Mahabharata uh, or, or, the, uh, or the defining aspect that, uh, you know, this community comes from this character in the Mahabharata, that these uh, are, uh, these people come from the lineage of uh, Dhritarashtra or Yudhishthira, or these people come from uh, the lineage of uh, Duryodh uh, uh, Bhima, uh, such things exist uh, all along our tribal world, uh, India. But in uh, Adilabad area, 
the Nayakapur community has a very close relationship with the various characters of Mahabharata. The Kolam community, which is a small community, has a very significant relationship or a, uh, or, or a defining relationship with Bhima and uh, uh, Bhima and uh, Bhima's son. Mm, yeah. And uh, yes, but uh, the Gonds also listen to the Mahabharata in a big way, and they it's common among Gonds to name uh, individuals with the various characters in uh, Mahabharata, like uh, uh, you know Bhima, Arjuna, uh, or naming women as Bhim Bai, etc., or Drupata Bai. So uh, the cult of Bhima, uh, which is uh, the important uh, cult for both uh, the Kolams and the Nayakpurs is also followed by uh, the Gonds, although they have their own distinct uh, uh, defining uh, mythology. They also identify with the Mahabharata uh, as if it was their own. So there is uh, this kind of a relationship where certain uh, mythological uh, narratives or characters and certain uh, ritual patterns are commonly followed by between the tribes. But then uh, each tribe also looks at the other uh, either in a you know a, um, patronizing fashion or in a slightly antagonistic relationship uh, despite the overall harmony that exists. So for instance uh, the Nayakapurs in Adilabad think that they are on a higher level of uh, uh, purity because they don't eat the meat of uh, the cow or the bull, uh, beef. While the Gons and the Kolams, uh, till quite recently, uh, were very fond eaters of beef. Uh, so uh, the Nayakapods uh, put them on a higher plane, uh, the way uh, many other castes uh, in, in, in the normal villages put uh, those who do not eat beef, uh, they put themselves on a higher play, uh, plane than the communities which eat beef. Uh, moving on to how a caste may view a tribe or a tribe may view a caste. Uh, here we come into the uh, important question also of how a caste may turn into tribe or a tribe may become embedded in the caste system with a, a defined profession. There are many examples uh, of this, uh, which must be known to all of you. Uh, for instance, the Goons of Adilabad, uh, they have this memory that they used to have huge empires uh, in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh and parts of Maharashtra that they lost those uh, uh, empires or, or kingdoms, and thereby they had to move to the south. A geographical memory is uh, very strongly embedded in the narratives on the Gons. Um, uh, there is a caste by name Vaddera in Telangana who are uh, builders of stone. Basically, they cut stone and build either uh, homes or you know foundations for homes, or they also line uh, the village. Uh, tanks and uh, village wells with granite stone cut by them. Uh, many studies have shown that the Vadaras probably, uh, if you study their uh, ethnic features, uh, probably were members of uh, either a Gond or uh, Kolam tribe. But they uh, moved into the villages and they took this profession of cutting stone. Now, uh, how a caste as a community might view tribal communities in its vicinity. Um, till the British has brought in gun powder, uh, you know, gun power in a big way, for the common person, the tribal or jungle communities had a very, uh, you know, uh, had a very, held a very special place because of their special capabilities. The forest tribes were very adept at moving in the forest, 
and uh, living in the forest, in the hostile climate of the forest, which the people from normal villages were not available. Apart from that, uh, the tribals could bring in certain special uh, forests produce uh, and you know, indulge in economic activities with these rural people. So uh, there was no way that uh, traditional uh, common uh, person in a traditional society would look down upon uh, a forest tribe as a lowly person. This uh, attitude towards looking down other communities as lowly or uncultured, I think it all derives from the kind of uh, social outlook which the British brought in and then passed on to the middle classes which got attached to them and through their education system and the total ideology which ran uh, their setup, they were able to pass on this kind of outlook to Indians and which still uh, unfortunately persists. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think if you look at uh, any kind of mythological story, uh, moving into a forest or living in a forest was always considered a very fine way of existence comparable to the fine existence which existed in cities and towns. Uh, how a tribal community might view a caste community in its vicinity, uh, when we look at this aspect, it gets into a little complicated. I think uh, this, is, this is the last uh, point. Yeah, uh, last five uh, minutes. Five yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, yeah. So uh, modern developments have brought in uh, many caste uh, societies or communities into the tribal world, into the uh, forests. And uh, uh, small tribal hamlets have been converted into big villages in which other communities are also living along with the earlier tribal communities. So the tribals have a big problem in how uh, they should uh, look at themselves in relationship with the supposedly uh, hierarchical structure of caste society. Um, to the extent possible, uh, uh, they would uh, love to place themselves on the top of the caste society in terms of parity, like, like equate themselves with the higher caste, so-called higher caste. But when that is not possible, they generally uh, satisfy themselves by equating themselves with the so-called backward caste. But towards the so-called untouchables uh, or the scheduled caste, uh, the tribals still quite recently would love to look down upon themselves as a, a lower community. Uh, there is also this issue of caste within tribes, uh, tribal casteism. Uh, because of crude enumeration practices and the bad way government records have been created in, uh, through census operations, the caste systems which exist in many tribal communities have not been either studied or documented properly. For instance, among the Lambada or Banjara community, we at least have three kinds of castes, uh, the Rajput or the ruling caste, the uh, Vaishya or the uh, middle uh, level of community, and we also have untouchables among them. And uh, often we also have a community of bards in them. Now, uh, not recognizing the kind of caste system which probably exists in many tribes, I think uh, also gives a very wrong idea of how uh, Indian society ex has existed in great variety. Uh, on the whole, I would say that it's a livelihood issue which has run uh, the caste identities and also tribal identities. Uh, there's nothing very uh, special to talk about it if we talk about livelihood. But the way uh, livelihood issues have been handled uh, in a society which has Jati, Varna and uh, Kula caste is, is by all standards uh, an impressive achievement because in this we have not only professional satisfaction, not only professional security, but also uh, a, a thrust towards excellence, a threat towards harmony between different communities. And uh, this generally has worked very well, although frictions and you know, uh, crisis situations have existed. Uh, 
every caste has is its own world because it's a professional community with a professional ethic, with a professional culture, its own defined ritual patterns, its own uh, defined uh, uh, celebrations, while they share many things with the rest of the communities in the village. Uh, I would like to conclude by uh, just uh, saying a few words about how uh, this very fine world of uh, Jati, Varna and caste, which gets reflected to some extent also in the uh, so-called tribal communities and uh, their way of looking at themselves and their own existential reality, uh, could continue in the modern world or how we can handle uh, the great uh, knowledge and the great understanding which uh, this social order and this social system has given to human beings in terms of what they can do, what they can achieve with the kind of satisfaction that they have. Um, I think uh, given the kind of exploitative system which modern capitalism and uh, modern industrial uh, ways of doing things and the pace at which things are changing, uh, it would be a very difficult task to somehow bring this understanding into a play uh, uh, to create a kind of a meaningful social system uh, in, in, in the kind of changing world we have. But uh, it's something worth attempting. Uh, certainly, the beauties that we see, the kind of uh, uh, realization of human potential, uh, despite many limitations that we saw in traditional society, traditional Indian society, will always be inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Sumanas Pratikaru. Uh, uh, his uh, study of uh, tribal communities after he got transferred to Adilabad, uh, actually it, it is an example of how uh, a person of his uh, potential makes use of even uh, problems such as transfer to a less known area into an opportunity of uh, study. He was transferred from Hyderabad, a big metro city, to Adilabad, not such a big city. But actually, he made use of that uh, transfer uh, for such a deep and wide study of the tribal communities. And uh, it, uh, his academic analytical incisive caliber, he turned it into an academic analysis. Thank you very much for that.